find a seat. We will get started here in uh, one minute. I really uh, like doing the music tonight. Um, uh, uh, Ron. Ron, thank you. Who helped me out? Ron and Peggy are in um, Brian uh, having a, a late turkey dinner. So uh, we're glad to see you tonight.
go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Brother Damien, would you pray for us, please? Heavenly Father, we'll thank you for being here to help the Savior. We ask that you forgive us of all our sins. I ask that you be with those on the prayer list. I want to thank you for, for blessings and, and, and requests fulfilled. I ask that you be with the pastor tonight as he delivers our message. You be with us as we go on out for the rest of the week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, let me run a let me run a few announcements by you. Um, while we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, I'm not going to count them, can, but while we've got six men here tonight, um, we need to set up one more row of tables for the fellowship uh, Sunday night. And I guess just we need to move these wherever. But we need to set up one more table if we can do that tonight. Six of us tonight is better than one of me tomorrow. <laughs> Did we get that? <laughs> All right. Secondly, uh, Miss Pat would like for someone, one or two of you, uh, to get the Christmas stuff out of that closet back there. She wants to do some more decorations. The tree. The tree? Okay, there's a tree in there. She'd like to set it up. So uh, if uh, while we're doing the tables, if somebody could... Uh, I need a little bit. She says it's way up on the top shelf. Okay. So whichever one of you will is the tallest in the group. See, even your mother will agree on that one. All right. Amen. Uh, we would appreciate that very much. I want to thank Pat for doing a little decorating. I guess you've noticed. Uh, I've got a few things up here. And uh, so um, Sunday night, uh, and from what we're hearing, we're going to have a really good crowd for this. And we're going to have some lost people here. We're going to have some lost people here. Uh, we're going to have some people here because their kids are going to be able to play. And uh, sometimes folks will come to that when they won't come to a preaching service. As a matter of fact, two or three families, lost families, that I know are coming, uh, I've been working on to get them to come here and preach in a normal service, and they just won't do it. But they'll be here Sunday night. That puts the well, ideas on us to pray for the Holy Spirit to touch their hearts. Because there will be a clear presentation of the gospel in the, uh, in the uh, play. Also, it's a great prospecting tool for the church. So, folks, uh, let's pray. Let's just really make spiritual intercession for the Lord to bless this. So here's how here's, here, here's how Sunday is for Sunday school night, men's prayer meeting 915. Uh, Bible study 945, preaching at, at, at 1045, no 130 service. Because we're coming back that night. All of you that have ever parked in the play, this pack meets you here at 5 o'clock. Then the play is at 6. And um, uh, that will be followed by fellowship in here, sandwiches, sweets, simple, not a cooked meal, simple. Um, Mike mentioned um, uh, Sunday morning, uh, Lane will be uh, doing our Christmas music. He will be uh, singing some Christmas specials Sunday morning. And then uh, Sunday night uh, before the... Uh, program begins, which we'll have the, the congregation will sing a couple of Christmas uh, songs, and then Ryan Peggy will do a couple of Christmas songs, and then we'll have a play. So we got a busy weekend, and there's a lot going on, and folks, none of us need any more activity, just for the sake of activity. Busy, for the sake of busy, uh, may make us look good, but then count with the Lord. So folks, let's pray. We have an opportunity this weekend to magnify the Lord and give a good representation of Washington Street Baptist Church to our community and to some new families. But, but those of us here, it behooves us to uh, be much in prayer for the Holy Spirit to bless what we're going to do. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh,
Um, I think we're going to need, I think, if someone can help us speak up, I think we probably are going to need some more plates and, and uh, maybe silverware. I don't, I don't know. Does anybody know about this? I have to go shopping to get some paper towels and some light bulbs for the church tomorrow. If we need more, well, pardon me with me. If we need more, we can just get it. Has anybody privy to any information on that? Anybody know? Yes, ma'am. Well, there was a lot of plates <coughs> under the counters, under the cabinet, so we'll check after church to see. Okay. I think it's just bowls that we need, you know, like okay. salad bowls. Well, let's check that out, ladies, while the guys are sitting up at the tables. Let's check that out, and if we do need some stuff, make me a list or tell Pat. If you don't give it to me in writing or tell her by the time I get to Walmart, I won't have a clue why I'm even there. So, all right. Ms. Pat, does that cover everything? All right, good. Uh, let me fill you in on uh, Karen had surgery in Dallas today. And uh, as far as we know, it went well. It was successful. Uh, they're, they're trying to bring her blood pressure up. It's still a little low. She will be staying overnight and Lord willing coming home tomorrow. And Miss Karen is real happy that uh, 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 Miss Amiga is real happy that uh, uh, Karen Randage, her good friend, who's over there with her, will bring her home. And Anita didn't have to go to Dallas. Amen. <laughs> In case y'all haven't been to Dallas, but it is not fun anymore. They're, they're, they're crazy over there. Miss um, uh, Margaret. They now have to give her so much medication to, to control the pain that uh, she sleeps just about all the time. So um, I, I talked with Patty, and uh, uh, nobody needs to go anymore unless you call first. Because the chance of you getting to see her if you just go over there is pretty slim. So if you want to go see her, that's fine. But call first because there's a good chance that, you know you won't be able to go. So uh, we need to be much in prayer for that situation. Uh, for the Lord, and you know that this family, good Christian family, and even in this time of them uh, uh, going to lose their mother, they're, they're a cheerful bunch, and that's how it ought to be for believers because uh, it certainly is a better place we're going to when we leave here. Amen. Uh, then I have a praise for Brother Mike. He's feeling better. He's, as you can tell, he's walking gingerly, but he's not in as much pain as he has been, and he's feeling better. So we need to keep praying, but we also need to be a much, continue to be much in prayer for Brother Mike. Uh, I think I probably should mention, everybody here see the news tonight? Okay, another mass uh, killing in uh, California this time. Uh, it's all still a real fluid situation. All they know is it's happening. They're trying to work at it. But apparently, this was some kind of a rehab center. These were, I thought it was a senior center, but it's not. It's a rehab center where they help people with physical infirmities. And these three guys just went in here and decided to see how many people they killed. And you know we're seeing more and more of that. Blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. Amen? Yes. Okay, let's turn that around. When a nation no longer recognizes the God of the Bible, the blessings lead with it. And I love my country. You know, we're here by choice. Y'all didn't have any choice. You were born. I, I'm here by choice. I love my country. But I'm telling you, we can be offended our high and holy God and probably has removed his hand of blessing off of us. And, uh, you know, I wonder, when, when, when is something going to happen to make us all serious enough to, you know what I mean? So, we need to be much in prayer. All right, other prayer requests. Anybody else? Yes, brother. We had a letter around the layoffs today and some good people lost their livelihood. Um, continue to pray for that. Three weeks before Christmas. Boy, I guess 
the business world is unfair, is it? We need to pray about that. A friend of mine from Granbury called me today. There was a factory burned down over there Monday morning. A rope factory, I guess, burned it to the ground. And the owners of the factory said, until they rebuild it, they will pay all their employees their full salary the whole time while they're rebuilding. Now, how unusual is that? How unusual is that? So, all right, other prayer requests, yes. Um, my mom, she's having some issues. She needs prayers. Okay, all right, we'll go pray for you, Mom. Yes, Brother Mike. Uh, if we all pray, I believe, I'm not 100% on the name, I believe it's Cohen. Uh, they got Morgan Mill, and they found out Thanksgiving that he, the husband, uh, has uh, colon cancer. Oh. And uh, I don't know much about him. It's through the acquaintance of Amy's. Okay. And I just, my heart went out to him. Yep. And I just like for us to pray for him. Okay. I think your name, the last name, Cohen. Cohen. All right. Very good. Anybody else? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Then, Brother Jeff, would you lead us in prayer audibly while everyone else is praying for him? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day and this opportunity to be here. Lord, just being with all these that have been lifted up and uh, lifted up tonight, prayer requests. Lord, just be with our nation and help us to get back on track. Just keep your hand on the services tonight and uh, be here among us and help us all to, to get the message that you have for us. And Amen. Thank you. All right, let's go to Psalm 103. We are still working through key psalms. Um, I don't have a deadline for this, uh, so I'm sure it will be another month, maybe two, uh, in the psalms. Uh, tonight I would like you to go to Psalms 103. Now you might remember that I did our Thanksgiving message out of Psalms 103, the first five verses. Um, this is a psalm of meditation. Uh, we haven't done one quite like this. Literally, David is talking to himself. He's saying, my soul. He's saying, my heart. And he's meditating on God's blessings and goodness in his life. It's a psalm of meditation. Um, meditation is largely a lost art in today's society because we live so fast. Meditation takes time. Meditation takes uh, solitude, quiet time. Um, to meditate, you uh, have to read, and you have to focus in on one passage, like Psalm 103, and maybe spend whatever little time you have every day over a period of a week. And like no other book in the Bible, I know the book in the world, the Bible is the more you read it and look at it and think about it, the more it opens up. And I, I, just from my experience of what I'm seeing in church, we're, we've kind of lost that because we're all so busy. And that's, that's kind of a shame because what, what a blessing. The second thing about meditation is uh, you talk to yourself, not out loud. Uh, but your spirit inside of you is communing with the Lord. Your lips 
start moving, you're not saying anything. You can if you want to, but your spirit, which is ruled by the Holy Spirit, and God hears you when you're speaking with yourself on the inside. Now, the world, of course, says if you're talking to yourself, you're crazy. Um, that has its connotations, but I'm talking about spiritual meditation. Where you take a passage of scripture and just brood over like a hen over her little chicks. And you let it speak to you. And your heart is responding to God. It's a lost art today. And we lose much. Uh, we are a uh, shallow, throwaway uh, society. And uh, in some areas, that's great. It keeps our economy going. But in the spiritual area, it's probably not good. So, the only way to do this psalm is just to walk through it. So if you'll, if you've got your Bible, if you'll follow with me, uh, let's just walk through it. Uh, the, the, the first verse and the second verse give the heart of what this psalm is. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So there can be praise. You can be praising God and rejoicing in the Lord and, 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 and the fellowshipping with the Lord, but never say a word. It's an inward thing. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. That's your spirit. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I would hope, I would think, I, I certainly pray that uh, when we come together on the Lord's Day, we sing and a lot of the songs we sing are, are songs where we're praising God for his blessings. You know, let's hope and pray that that's not just the lips moving, that our hearts are in on that deal. Amen? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And if you'll remember my sermon from, from Thanksgiving, I listed five who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Now, I, I want you to notice something. The first thing out of five blessings he lists is that the Lord has forgiven him his sins. All blessings from God depend on, number one, our confessing our sins, and number two, he forgives you. Nothing good is going to happen un until that's taken care of. Sin shuts the door of communion with God, it shuts the door of fellowship with God, it shuts the, it keeps the door shut of blessings from God. So the first thing David says, and he, he forgiveth all my iniquities. And I want you to notice all, all. And by the way, since we're still on planet Earth, we're still sinning. And we're still confessing that he's still forgiven. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. I, I, I mentioned when I taught this that we're here talking primarily of spiritual diseases, which are infinitely worse than physical diseases. Spiritual diseases, if not cured when this life is over, will send you to hell. Physical diseases can only serve the physical life. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, unforgiven sins, spiritual diseases, if not dealt with, will destroy you in this life and the next. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Our God is a very loving, merciful God who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. 
not only so not eagles, I didn't know. They lose all their wings at a certain time of year. And about the time they lose their wings, they look haggardy and rough. But then they put on brand new wings. And when they do, they look like they just come back to life. They look like healthy, beautiful birds. Folks, when we lose the burden of sin, and when we lose our spiritual diseases, and the Lord puts in us His grace, we become new people. We, we enter into a new phase of life. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, my wife and Miss Esther especially will appreciate this. Uh, if you can apply this to the physical arena. If all you ever eat is junk, eventually it's going to show on your health. If you put good stuff inside of you, that's going to, that's going to show on your health. I'm not trying to preach diet here, but we're, we're a society that doesn't do too good about that. You know that, don't you? We're really not. Because cooking a meal takes time. It's a whole lot easier just to swing through Sonic and keep the wheels turning. Sometimes that's necessary, but folks, if your whole life is like that, I'm old enough to be a lot of you people's daddy. You're going to talk to you like a daddy for a minute. You're going to end up pretty sick when you get old. You're going to end up pretty sick when you get You're going to have a lot of diseases when you get older. Okay, I'll go on. I said, notice, notice that. Will, did you notice the total absence of amen? I mean, there's a dead silence. All right. Quick there. Yeah, amen. Move on, preacher. Keep going. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. I did a whole sermon about this not long ago. When you belong to the Lord, you can hear you. You're his child. I see how Will and Angie smother over Isaac. That's their only child. And I mean, they watch over him and they take good care of him. And I see how Bradley gets watched over and cared for. Well, multiply that a million times. That's how God takes care of us. He made known his ways on Moses and his path to <coughs> the children of Israel. There is a special providence that watches over God's people. And one of the greatest blessings he gives you and gave you is the word of God. Uh, why don't you stop for a minute and just think, where would you be without a Bible? Think about that a minute. Where would you be if you didn't have your Bible? I, I can't even imagine. Because I spend, you know, two, three hours every day, seven days a week. I, I can't even imagine my life without a Bible. Man, as far as I'm concerned, if that happens, just go ahead and shoot me. He made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. The spirit, the blessing of the Bible. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Our God is a good, merciful, gracious, slow to anger, merciful God. Amen. By the way, thank you. <coughs> Some of us are a little slow to catch on to what he's trying to teach us. Have you ever noticed, you that are up in years, how the same problems keep coming back and bugging you? You may get a little relief for a while, and after a while, the same old problems come back, and you keep fighting the same battles, and sometimes you probably say to yourself, am I ever going to get over this? Am I ever going to learn? And don't look at me like that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, in the Lord good, he bears with us, just like you did with your kids when when they were living, you just the same lessons over and over and over and over. I'm doing a bus up now, a drive that quit, and I've got 
got 60 little darlings on that bus, not speaking very loosely. And uh, apparently, the driver that quit did not do a good job with the children on the bus because they are out of control. I tell you what, I'm telling the same 20 kids 10 times on every ride, sit down, get your feet out of the aisle, sit down, get your feet out of the aisle. I mean, over and over and over and over. And after I got them all off, I got a nice little ride back to the bus where I was thinking, because I knew I was going to be the bus I was thinking that I'd be driving back. I wonder how many times God's had to do that to me. And trust me, he has. And you too. But you know what? He keeps doing it. He keeps telling us, sit down. He keeps telling us, keep your feet out of the aisles. Spiritually, of course. Because he loves us. He's very gracious. And I don't know. We don't have any idea what gave occasion to David to write this psalm. But apparently the realization has sunk in on him that God's been awful gracious with him. He will not always chide, neither will his keepers of anger forever. Sometimes the frowns of providence, he has to send them to teach us, but they don't last. When God has to deal with us about issues in our life, they don't ever last. The good times come back. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Amen. Can you say amen here? I mean, has he dealt with you as severely as you deserve? Has he really whooped you for all your sins? Of course not. He has he rewarded us according to our iniquities? Absolutely not. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Well, you know, we think we're awful important on this planet here, but you know what? In the scheme of the multiple of universes over the trillions of light years, and God did all that, my goodness, this whole planet is not even a speck on God's agenda. And yet he is so great and so infinite, he knows us all by name and knows everything that's going on. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. How far is the east from the west? Well, when you get to the east, you got to go all the west. And when you go to the west, you got to go all the way. And you just keep going in circles till you get dizzy. That's how far he removed our transgressions. And by the way, he not only removed them, he forgot them. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Now the Old Testament word fear is the New Testament word faith. Without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God pities those that fear him, that are that recognize him and are cognizant of him, and believe him, and believe his word. Why? He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Now, sometimes we need to remember that too, don't we? Sometimes we get a little big for our britches. Sometimes we think, we're, oh man, this world would fall apart without us. Look what I'm doing now. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If the great God remembers we're dust, why don't we remember we're dust? It's only as for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. First of all, we have everything right here to in time in our life. And that's not counting a thousand different accidents that could happen to us. Grass grows in the morning, we cut it down. Flowers get trampled, they die. Folks,
Folks, every time we see grass, every time we see a flower, we need to remember that we're dust. And we're going to go back to dust. I went, I think yesterday, to Karen's DPS office. I like to visit with her and praise her because I wasn't going to be able to go to Dallas. And uh, she pointed to four, we were talking about me doing this bus route while I'm doing it right now. And she pointed to four, four uh, files, four files, four people in the last few weeks have been killed on that little stretch of road while I'm doing the bus route. Jeff, will you and I drive every day? Not only if nothing ever happened, are we going to be gone in seven or eight years, let alone a thousand different things that can happen to us. As for man, <coughs> that's dust. His days are as grass, and the flower of the field, so it flourishes, for the wind passes over it, and it's gone, and the place where thereof will know it no more. It's amazing how quickly that we're gone, people forget we were ever here. Truly only one life, and it's soon gone. And folks, I don't care how high you rise, when you're gone, only what's done for Christ in your life is going to amount to hell and beans. Mm -hmm. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. What are what your kids are going to be like when you and I are gone? What what the memory of us is going to be when we're gone? You see, we can live so that they will be God's blessing will be on them after we're gone. So we're saved. Now, if that doesn't give us the incentive to live right, I don't know what will. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. David learned something that, I, that we all need to learn in life. God's best, his best of the best, is reserved for those who love his word. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. God's best of the best is for those of us that love his word. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. The general providence of a sovereign God is over all the creation. The unbeliever doesn't want to even know, have anything to do with God or know anything about God, but the truth of the matter is God still rules them, whether they know it or not, whether they like it or not. This world may look out of control to you and me. And it does look out of control through the eyes of unbelieving news media. But it's not. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens as high as it is. His kingdom ruleth over all. God still rules this world. And when it's all said and done, it's going to be his way. Bless the Lord. The last three verses. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Angels that do not sin, that minister to God, that are not corporal, that are spiritual beings, that are in the presence of God, praise Him and worship Him. They never needed to be saved. They do not sin. They're in God's presence. They do not daily receive the blessings and the mercies and the help that you and I need. Praise Him. How much more should we? Who are much more beholden to the grace and the mercy of God. And so... David concludes with, Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul.
We don't know what made David do this. We don't know what made David write this. It's not explained. But obviously there was some occasion in his life that he just sat down and he thought and he meditated and he pondered the blessings of God in his life. And by the grace of God and by the will of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he wrote it down. I don't mind telling you, off and on, I've, I've been in this psalm for a month. And still, every time I pick it up, the Lord shows me something new. This is a living book. We have a living soul and spirit. And when we take enough time for this book, it feeds us. It strengthens us. It encourages us that we may function as God intended us to function and that we may be a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate it. It means a lot. We have some folks gone, but we still have a good chance tonight. I appreciate it. If you can, I know that some of you are tired because you've worked all day, and I know some of you have to get ready and go to work. Uh, but if you stay for a couple of minutes and leave the ladies and check out the kitchen with this pad and make a list, and the rest of us can just go ahead and get another row of tables set up, I think that'll give us about 75, and, and that'll be enough. So, uh, anyway, let's stand.